Hey everyone, today we're going to be going over my basic eyeshadow routine. So I've been noticing in the comments that some of you are more beginners in makeup, so I wanted to kind of reel things back a little bit and step back to the basics. So I'm going to show you a very simple, easy eye look and kind of walk you through the decisions on why I place what where. So the palette I'm going to be using is the Lorac Pro palette. This was one of the absolute first eyeshadow palettes I got when I was starting to get into makeup. It's got a mirror and it's got great organization and great shades. So we've got shimmers all down here and then corresponding not all the same colors, but they match very well with the shades down below. These are all matte shades on the top. If you're really on a budget, I suggest ordering some stuff from BH Cosmetics. I'm going to be using a lot of their brushes from a kit that was one of the first kits I got. The palette that's pretty new from them is this one from Carly Bible. She's a YouTuber as well, and she collabed with BH Cosmetics to create this palette. It's got some beautiful mattes and shimmers. It also has some highlight shades, but these can be used for eyeshadow as well so you can use the technique I'm going to show you with pretty much any eyeshadows you have but if you are looking for affordable palettes that have a lot of color a lot of different options definitely check out BH I am a BH affiliate so I will have um, that link down below if I do link anything in the description it is because it is an affiliate link so I would make a small commission off of your purchase I will mainly be using BH cosmetics brushes I got this there's a lot more than these in the set itself and they still sell it on BH I will link it down below but it is hot pink now instead of purple it's the same exact thing just a different color it comes with face brushes and it comes with a lot of eye brushes as well so if you're a beginner I highly recommend going on their website getting some brushes they're not bad quality they last a really long time I've had these for a few years now they wash really easy so I do recommend these I will be using some but not all of these and I'll explain the reasons why I'm using other brushes mainly because I just prefer the way they perform versus ones in this set okay so we're really zoomed in I'm going to start with some eyeshadow primer this is essential you do need eyeshadow primer when you wear eyeshadow. Believe me, it makes a world of a difference with how long your eyeshadow wears, blendability, wearability, it's just really important. I'm using this one that I've been using a ton on my channel lately. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Eyeshadow Primer. The first primer I ever used was the Urban Decay um, Eyeshadow Primer Potion. If you're starting to get into makeup and you're hearing about all these different products, this one is going to be what a lot of people recommend for when you first start. It's great now. I still use this as well. Um, but yes, Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion is another good one, but for today, I'm using a more affordable option with the Wet n Wild. And this really isn't a long time consuming step, so if you're worried about using a lot of time, it's literally pat 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 on your lid and pat 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 on your other lid. You want to do more of a patting than rubbing because the skin on your eye is very delicate and the more you pull and tug on it, the more you can create wrinkles. If you do have any small lines on your eyes, this can also help smooth it out a tiny bit. It's not going to be a magical miracle worker, but it does help. A trick that I didn't know when I first started out was to use a matte powder, a very neutral, to set down the primer. If you try to go right onto the primer without setting it down, you might take too long and it'll start creasing or the shadows won't blend as easy. I'm just gonna do an extra pat right where my crease is just to make sure there's nothing there. And then I'm gonna take this big fluffy brush from BH and go into cream. This is a matte shade. And if you don't know what the difference is between matte and shimmer is, matte is more of a flat shade. There's not gonna be any sparkle, any shine to it versus the shimmer where that's a little more self-explanatory. You're not gonna see this color and it's gonna depend on your skin tone what shade you use. So just try to find a matte shadow that matches. You can go lighter if you want other shadows underneath to pop. Just to repeat so that this is a little easier, we're using cream to pat down and set down the eyeshadow primer and make it easier to blend 
the next shadows. Now we're gonna go into the crease. I'm actually using, this is my ride or die crease brush. This is from Sephora, it's the Pro Featherweight Crease. There are various crease brushes. I definitely didn't have this one when I first started. You can use something from a BH set that's more of a domed, I had a little fuzzy on it, more of a domed pointed crease. But this one is just my favorite, so I'm gonna go for it. When it comes to crease, you're gonna wanna pick a shade that's kind of in this range. Probably not this one because it's a little light, but these deeper shades, very neutral and typically mattes. You can put shimmers in your crease. I just tend to prefer mattes in the crease because I usually put shimmer on the eye. It's all about creating a balance. You can tell this is a well-loved palette and I've had it for a while. Today I'm going to take taupe. We're just going to pop that right in the area of your crease. Now if your crease isn't as prominent, you're gonna have a little bit of a harder time figuring it out, but it's really all about playing with the shadows to figure out where you want to place them. I like to bring my crease shades just a tiny bit higher than my crease so that it's more evident in my makeup look. So just very soft, you don't want to put a lot of pressure. I know when I first started, I used to just go right like bam on my eye and I thought that was the way to go. Now there's going to be areas of your eye where the shadow is going to want to cling to. Like on my eyes, out in these outer edges, the shadow loves to get a little bit more bunched up. But don't worry about that now because we will blend. I'm going to take this Mikasa E300 brush and this is a blending brush. It's very fluffy. It's going to give me a lot of soft bristles that are going to buff out the edges. You could also use something that's not as fat but it's thinner and still has that fluffiness to it. So I'm going right where I had the crease and it's very softly. Oops, I had some shimmer on this brush. Whoops. Very gently. You can you can blend this way with little windshield wiper motions just like you did with the crease. I do that, but I also like to kind of swirl. I found that this works very well in the areas, especially where it bunches up on my eye, which is right here. You will lose some of the color when you blend, so keep that in mind as you're doing your look. Now we're gonna take a regular eyeshadow brush. This is kind of the most typical looking eyeshadow brush when you think of eyeshadow brushes. How many times can I say eyeshadow? And we're gonna go into my favorite shade in this palette, light bronze. You can totally use a matte shade if you want, but I'm just adding a touch of shimmer lightly pressing that down first because I am going to show you another little trick. You don't want to sweep too much because then you can get fallout on your eyes. I've been guilty of that as well, definitely, because you just want to have the shadow on as quickly as possible. I've just put some of the shadow on my brush and I'm going to make this more metallic. So I'm going to take a setting spray. This is the Milani Make It Last setting spray, but you could also use a little spray bottle with water. It's not going to be as sticky, but if you don't have a setting spray, that works as well. So I'm just going to use this and I'm going to give it a quick spray. And we're going to use the same kind of padding. And it's just going to add some more high shine to your lid but it just gives such a beautiful high shine versus the other side. And I definitely recommend putting it on your brush first, then wetting it, instead of trying to wet the brush and then dipping it into the shadows. One of my favorite everyday palettes, for sure. And if you feel it's necessary, what you can do is go back into that taupe shade and just add some more in. So I'm just gonna fluff that up. Next thing I like to do is give more dimension to the look. We're going to put a deeper shade in the outer corner and a lighter shade in the inner corner. I'll explain more about the lighter shade, but I like to put a deeper shade on the outside to make it not necessarily smokier, but it just makes it look more well-rounded. I'm going to take some of this matte shade Sable right here. You can use a shimmer or a matte, up to you. I just am going with a matte this time. Just very gently. Focusing that right in the outer edge and I find it helpful to sweep a tiny bit into the crease Just in the outer edge of the crease because that's going to round off that edge some more It's very subtle, but it will help smooth it out a blending brush will be your friend Darker shades will close your eye. 
So we added some darker shades to the outer corner, so now we're gonna balance it out by adding some lighter shades to the inner corner and the brow bone. I'm going to take the shade Nude right here. It's got a little bit of shimmer in it. And I'm using a Morphe brush this time. This is the Morphe E36. And we're just going to go right in this inner corner here. And I like to sweep some up. Adding the light here is going to tie the look more together by adding the light in the light here, giving that balance. But it's also going to make your brow bone look more lifted. We're just going to go right in and blend the taupe slightly with the brow bone highlight so that it's not just sitting by itself. I like using an angled brush or a flat edged brush to do this and we're going to create a mock eyeliner. I know eyeliner can be scary to those who are beginning with eyeliner, so I like to suggest using an eyeshadow first. If you start by using an eyeshadow and holding a brush and applying eyeliner that way, it's going to become a lot easier and more fluid when you pick up an eyeliner pencil or pen. Because I don't want to go too bold with the liner, I'm going to not use black or espresso. I'm going to use sable, which we used in the outer corner. Start lightly lining as close to the lash line as possible. Again, this is giving more dimension. It's gonna make your eyelashes look fuller. Use that pressing technique. No, you're gonna be tempted to go like this and slide it. Before we move on to the lower lash line, I'm going to line my waterline. If you don't know what your waterline is, it's this area right here. When I do smokier nighttime looks, I will put black in my waterline, but since we're doing something bright, very easy, school work type of makeup look we don't want to close off the eye and make us look even more tired so let's open it up this is the rimmel scandalize waterproof eye pencil and it's just a nude this is going to look really weird to those of you who've never done it but it's easy so now my eyes are looking more awake and bright and then we're going to take that angled brush that we were just using on our upper lashes we're going to go back into sable we're going to very gently place some in the outer edge of the lower lash line. We don't want to bring it all the way in because that will close off and make your eye smaller. I'm bringing it to just about here. And then I'm going to go back into light bronze with the same brush. And press. Be sure to press in this section because we don't want that shadow falling down. And then as the last final step, we're going to go back into Nude and just make sure we've got that highlight shade. I'm going to use CoverGirl's Total Tees for my mascara. So here is the final look of the eyes. Very easy wear it to work you can wear it to school simple it doesn't take long once you learn the steps you'll be putting it on very quickly but to those of you who are new into makeup and you are watching my videos I see you I hope that you liked this and I hope it wasn't too boring for those of you who already sort of know what to do with your makeup but Either way, it's another look you could do very easy at home. I do recommend this palette. It is a little powdery, but that actually makes it easier, in my opinion, to blend them out. So lots of mattes, lots of shimmers. It also has some nicer, deeper shades for if you're doing a date night smoky look. My technique may not work for everyone, but I really hope my explanation was useful. I do come out with new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, so if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and like and comment and share. <laughs> I like growing this beauty community so much and chatting with all of you in the comments. It brings me so much joy. As always, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.